God, praise God, praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have every cause to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome you to the 46th session of the General Council meetings of the Church of Pentecost. Dear beloved, the Executive Council has been here for about eight to nine days. The area has joined us about two days. And one key scripture that has guided this meeting is what I'm reading to you. And after that, we invite Voice of Pentecost to come and lead us celebrate the goodness of Jehovah Elohim. Isaiah 63 and verse 14, NIV. Isaiah 63, verse 14. Like cattle that go to the plain, they were given rest by the Spirit of the Lord. This is how you guided your people to make for yourself a glorious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we put our hands together and celebrate God in this place? Come on, everybody. Let's put our hands together. It's our praise unto Jesus. It's our thanksgiving unto Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning, we want to celebrate God for what he has done and for who he is. Hallelujah. Can we rise to our feet? And as we rise, you can give somebody a high five and just say, he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. Come on. Say, oh, he is the, his name is Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Praise your holy name. We will praise your holy name. You have won the victory. 
to celebrate the goodness of the owner of this great church. Indeed, he is good. And his mercies and his provisions are every morning new. We humbly want to announce to the house that by the kind courtesies of the good Lord, his excellency, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, has arrived. 
sir. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. The chairman, we are now trying to compile the list of those who have been arrived. But with your kind permission, I want to do some introductions before we move on. We have in our midst, I'm not going through any specific order. We have in our midst our own Honorable Elder Dr. Yao Educhum, the Minister of Education and MP for Bosongchi this year. We have some members of parliament and MMDCs. Honorable Moses Enim, MP for Trobo and Deputy Minister for Fisheries and Aquaculture. Honorable, I don't know, but let me go. So Honorable Elder Ahmed Ibrahim, MP for Banda. Honorable Elder Desmond Dikrapeitu, MP for Gomua East. Elder Dr. Mas. Okay, let me just run through. We now check in the list. I'll come back again. We have Honorable Elizabeth Saki, the MP or Mayor for Accra. Honorable Dickness Elizabeth Saki. We have Her Leadership Justice Dickness Elizabeth Ankuma, former High Court Judge. Honorable Richard, Richmond Amponsa Ejaben, DC Achiasi. Honorable Kwesin Kroma Ojili. DC Krachi in Chumuru, Honorable Emmanuel Kofi Ajiman, MC Doma East, Honorable Clement Wilkinson, MC Ga West, Honorable Kwesi Banzo, DC Lembele, Honorable Ajapon, Municipal Chief Executive Quell East. Uh, we have the Regional Minister, Central Region in our midst, Madam. Forgive me for not getting your name. I'll get it and come back later. Chair, we have the first Vice President of GPCC, Right Reverend Gordon Kisev, Founder and President, Life International Church. We have Apostle Samuel Ampon Safrempon, Chairman, Christ Apostolic Church. Apostle Dr. Aaron Amina, President of the Apostolic Church, Second Vice President, GPCC. Reverend Stephen Wingham, General Superintendent, Assemblies of God. Reverend Francis C., General Overseer, Four Square Gospel Church. Apostle Dr. Anya Nibwedum, Founder and General Overseer, Jesus Generation Evangelistic Ministry. Right Reverend Godwin De Lafia Gome, President Full Gospel Church International. <laughs> Pastor Eduard Diodu, National Overseer, Deepa Christian Life Ministry. <laughs> right Reverend Prosper Jomeku, Moderator Global Evangelical Church. You are welcome. Right Reverend Ohene Benjamin Abuaji, President, Presiding Bishop Perez Chapel. Yes, my brother, you are there. Reverend Derek A. Kumsen, General Director, Scripture Union, Ghana. Apostle, Emmanuel Ni, Apostle Dr. Emmanuel Ni Okule Tete, General Secretary, GPCC. <clears throat> Very Reverend Dr. John Kwesi Ado, General Secretary, Bible Society of Ghana. I'll come again. Chairman, we have our boards, chairman of our boards and committees in the Church of Pentecost. They are here, please. If you are around, uh, chairman of or a board and committee, please, you are duly acknowledged. Let me see you by hand. If you want to redeem some time. We have board of trustees. They are here. Uh, Apostle Prof. Pukunina, Apostle Wigwell Ato Addison, Elder Dr. Lawyer Kanabua, Elder Yi Bwete, Elder Dr. Johnson Addo. We have directors of ministries. Please, all directors of ministries who want to acknowledge you, give me a wave. All directors of ministries, COP, please give me a wave. Min PMM, women, evangelism, chaplaincy, 
and all that. We have our immediate past chairman of the Church of Pentecost Apostle, Professor Kukunina, here with us. Thank you, you are welcome. We, have, we are blessed to have two of our former general secretaries in our midst. Apostle Dr. Frekuda couldn't make it, but he sent his greetings. We have Apostle Ato Addison, former general secretary, is here. Their spouses are duly acknowledged. We also have Apostle Abet Amwa. You are also <laughs> chairman. We have reps from our sister church in the UK. That's Ellen Pentecostal Churches UK. We have Reverend Steve Ball and Reverend Kujo Wood, who are leadership team members. Our brothers, you are welcome to Ghana. Chairman, with your permission, let me introduce the Executive Council members of the church to His Excellency. Chairman, we have Apostle Usman Zabri, uh, our RCC coordinator for the Francophone Block, the National Head for the Church in Burkina Faso. Then we have Apostle SYNG, Regional Coordinator for the Central Region and Cape Coast Area Head. Prophet David Kankambidito, uh, Greater Accra Regional Coordinator and Ashaman Area Head. Apostle Ni Isaac Kutejani, uh, Bono Anna Hafo, Regional Coordinator and uh, Area Head for Techiman. Apostle Yao Ejei Kwatin, Area Head for Bantama and Ashanti Regional Coordinator. Apostle Esu Asante, Executive Council Member, Area Head Kaneshi. We have Apostle Sylvester Ahin, the board chairman of PCC, and area head for Tamale and coordinator for the Northern Region. Apostle Dr. Dela Kwampa, voter and OT coordinator, and area head for who? Apostle M.K. Etru, area head for Kufurudia and coordinator for Eastern Region. Apostle James Raj, the National Head for India and the Coordinator for Asia. Apostle Vincent Ananidente, Permanent Director, Executive Council Member and Coordinator for Chieftaincy Ministry. Am I through? And then we have the International Missions Director in our midst, Apostle Emmanuel Ajimai Bakwin. And then Apostle Dr. Daniel Ochre Walker, Coordinator for Western Region and Western North, Area Head for Takwa. Your humble servant of the church, Alex Nanaya Kumila, Regional Secretary. I'm also around. And by the grace of God and divine provision, we have the vision bearer, the man God has given to the church and the nation and the world to champion the possessing the nation's agenda in the house. There's no other person than our brother, a team player, a good leader, Apostle Eric Nyameche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost, a member of Empower 21 Global Council, and the president of GPCC. Chairman, you are welcome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Our wives, you are all duly acknowledged and uh, welcome. Chairman, we want to proceed by taking scripture reading. We are reading from Exodus chapter 15, verse 1 to 11. And to do us the honors, uh, Mrs. Philomena Mreku, the director, women's ministry, and then Apostle Felician Holashi, the, national, the president of our church in Benin. He will take it in French. My fellow will take it in English. Exodus chapter 15, verse 1 to 11. After that, Pastor Kwesi and not Asante, the general manager, Penn TV, will come and lead us through a time of worship. Thank you. We are taking our reading from Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. And I'm reading from the NIV. 
the song of Moses and Miriam. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver, he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariot and his army, he has hurled into the sea. The best of the Pharaoh's offices, he has drowned them in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sunk to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood up like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword, and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath, and the sea covered them. They sunk like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness? Awesome in glory, working wonders. I like to repeat the 11. Who among you, the gods, is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? Amen. Gloire à Dieu. Nous lisons dans Exode chapitre 15, le verset 1 à 11, version Louis II. Alors Moïse et les enfants d'Israël chantèrent ce cantique à l'Éternel. Ils dirent « Je chanterai à l'Éternel car il a fait éclater sa gloire. Il a précipité dans la mer » Le cheval et son cavalier. L'éternel est ma force et le sujet de mes louanges. C'est lui qui m'a sauvé. Il est mon Dieu. Je le célébrerai. Il est le Dieu de mon Père. Je l'exalterai. L'éternel est un vaillant guerrier. L'éternel est son nom. Il a lancé dans la mer les chars de Pharaon et son armée. Ces combattants d'élite ont été engloutis dans la mer rouge. Les flots les ont couverts. Ils sont descendus au fond des eaux comme une pierre. Ta droite, ô éternel, a signalé sa force. Ta droite, ô éternel, a écrasé l'ennemi. Par la grandeur de ta majesté, tu renverses tes adversaires, tu déchaînes ta colère, elle les consume comme du chaume. Au souffle de tes narines, les eaux se sont amoncelées, les courants se sont dressés comme une muraille, les flots se sont durcis au milieu de la mer. L'ennemi disait, je poursuivrai, j'atteindrai, je partagerai le butin. Ma vengeance sera assouvie. Je tirerai l'épée. Ma main les détruira. Tu as soufflé de ton haleine. La mer les a 
couvert. Ils se sont enfoncés comme du plomb dans la profondeur des eaux. Verset 11. « Qui est comme toi parmi les dieux, ô éternel Qui est comme toi, magnifique en sainteté, digne de louange, opérant des prodiges ?» Amen. Praise the Lord. We are grateful to God for the Bible reading, which will be the basis and emphasis of our worship for this morning. Once again, reiterating the verse 11 that says that who amongst the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. Your Excellency, Apostle Chair, beloved hearing gathered, I agree, and I believe that you also agree with the song of Moses, who is making this what I call a confident claim when it comes to what God is able to do based on the narrative that he outlined in the song, there could only be one conclusion. Who is like you, O Lord? Because it is only God who at the blast of his nostrils, things can be brought into this array and our enemies are shattered. Moses and Israel were in transition and God granted them victory. Five years ago, we were also in transition as a church. But God granted us victory. And that is the reason why as we gather here, only one song we can sing. Who is like you? Oh God. I want to humbly ask if you can rise so that we can sing this song unto God and magnify his name. Who is like unto thee? Oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Yeah. 
this firm claim that there is none like unto you. It is not only Lord a revelation we have had but it is a firm conviction in our hearts because Lord the lines are written clearly on the wall that because of your backing with us we have seen your glory revealed. You are glorious in holiness. You are fearful in praises. You do wonders. Even now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Cristiano and Voice of Pentecost. Chairman, I want to make some few acknowledgments. We have Honorable Eugenia Kusi, former MP Takwa Inswam in our midst. We have our revered retired ministers, their wives and widows in our midst. Gallant soldiers, God bless you. Chairman, we have Bishop K. Loss Nejay, the Bishop of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church and Vice Chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana. Our brother, you are warmly welcome. He came with Reverend Dr. Cyril Fios, General Secretary, Christian Council of Ghana. And we have Apostle Jude Hammer, former Director of Scripture Union. He's also in the house. Papa, you are welcome. We have Apostle Dr. Colonel B.J. Kumiwood. He's also here. We would want to acknowledge you. And then Apostle ADP James Tete. Chairman, we have Bishop Dr. Paul Kwabna Buafo, presiding bishop, the Methodist Church of Ghana. We have Honorable Justin Amarigold Asan, the Central Regional Minister. Madam, now I've got to know your name. You are warmly welcome. We also have Honorable Uhusu Banahene, Regional Minister Bono, is also here. We have Honorable Eric Nana Ajima Prempe, Director General Nadmu. Honorable Cecily Adapa, former MP New Ebrim, and former Minister for Water and Sanitation. Mami, you are welcome. We have Mr. Alexander Afo, Chief Director and Minister of Information, Dickness Marian Os Dickness, Chief Superintendent Marian Osse, Divisional Police Commander, Kwaun Kwetia Division. Mami, you are welcome. Dickness Mersilabi, Deputy Commissioner, Shrag. You are welcome. Dickness no, DOP Dr. Francis Omane Ado Elder, Deputy Director, Ghana Prison Service. 
We have Elder Dr. and Mrs. Siam Ejepon, Chairman, Jospon Group of Companies. Elder Dr. Nana Samuel Amotobin, Chairman, Tobinko Group of Companies. Elder Dr. Nana KJC, CEO, Nana KJC Company Limited. Elder Stephen Ulaku, CEO, Nezo Group, Takwa. Elder Samuel Boachi Pobi, Managing Director, Anglo Gold Ashanti, Duapri Mines. Elder Bismarck of Fair and Sun, CEO, Three Dreamer Manufacturing Company Limited. Dickness Dr. Augustine Anami, Mami, you are welcome. Then we have Elder and Mrs. Prince Amwa. We have Elder Dr. Daniel Walkman Achu, Agozome District, okay, and Elder Mark Brako Apia. We have also in our midst Berima Osefi DM the second, Nigeria Henning. Elder, you are welcome. Great things he has done. Dearly beloved in the Lord, five years ago, God gave us a man. He had a vision and uh, the overarching theme was possessing the nations. The Lord has led us through four already. And this morning, he is here to give account of his stewardship for the last year. Dear beloved, I present to you the chairman of the Church of Pentecost to come and deliver to us the state of the church address. Apostle Eric Nyameche, chairman, Church of Pentecost, president, Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. Thank you very much. His Excellency, Dr. Mohamedou Baumia, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, and our special guest of honor, that you are warmly welcome. Apostle Alexander Nanaya Kumilabi, the General Secretary, Apostle Emmanuel Ajiman Bequin, the International Missions Director, members of the Executive Council, Apostle Professor Poku Onyina, our immediate past chairman, Apostle Dr. Michael Kwabna to me, our former chairman, Apostles, Prof, Prophets, Evangelists, National and Area Heads, distinguished delegates of the Ealing Pentecostal Churches in the UK, distinguished heads of churches and parachurch organizations, honorable members of parliament and ministers of state, Metropolitan, Municipal, and District Chief Executives, other government functionaries here present, Ministry Directors and Ministry Executive Committee members, Ministers of the Church of Pentecost, Trustees of our dear Church, Chairman, and com Chairman of Committee and Boards, Area Women's Ministry Leaders, Retired Ministers here present, the Press, Fellow Councillors, Invited Guests, Ladies and gentlemen, praise the Lord. On behalf of the Executive Council, I welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the opening ceremony of the 46th session of the General Council meetings of the Church of Pentecost. Let us use this opportunity to welcome all of you, especially His Excellency, our special guest of honor, Dr. Mohamedou Baumia, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. 
I also welcome our cherished heads of churches and parachurch organizations present here with us. We are very grateful to you for accepting our invitation to be with us here in person. We are incredibly thankful. I welcome our friends, Reverend Steve Ball and Reverend Kojo Wood. They are special delegates from our sister church, Elim Pentecostal Churches in the UK. We are, we are so grateful that you could make time to be with us today. We are honored to have our two past chairmen, Apostle Professor Pokunina retired and Apostle Dr. Michael Kwabna into me in our midst. Fathers, we thank God for your lives. Dearly beloved in the Lord, I first want to express my profound appreciation to God for his abundant grace and mercies towards his church. He continues to be faithful to his covenant with his church. I'm particularly grateful to him for the opportunity he has given me to head this church in the past five years. It has been a fruitful journey thus far. Thanks to your tremendous support, to the almighty God be all the glory. My appreciation also goes to the executive council members for their admirable support and dedication to the church of Pentecost. Brothers, I'm grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to humbly at this point pay a special tribute to the General Secretary, Apostle Alexander Nanaya Kumilabi. As you may be aware, this council meeting marks the last Apostle Alexander Nanaya Kumilabi will be attending in his official capacity as General Secretary. It marks the end of his second five-year tenure as a general secretary. You agree with me that he has served selflessly and faithfully in the last 10 years. My brother, please come. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord? Yeah, he's my good brother. He has been, he has been of great help to me. Yeah. See, people like us who do not know anything, when the Lord places you in a position, he brings people like this around you so they will cover your nakedness. Apostle, as you carry on this noble ministry in a different capacity, may the Lord who you have so faithfully served bless you and give you much more grace. Dearly beloved, in this meeting, our brother, Apostle Osman Zabri, who has served the Francophone block on the Executive Council for 15 years, will be reviewed. Osman, please be upstanding. That is a great man of God. 15 years of meritorious service for the Church of Pentecost. God bless you. He will be reviewed. His distinguished service to God and the Church of Pentecost is sincerely appreciated. In this same vein, Apostle Dr. Daniel Ochiwaka, Apostle S.Y. Enki, Prophet David Kankamberito, will also bring their terms to an end. Shall we please have them stand? My brothers, God bless you so much. Dan, God bless you. Bedito is the most popular name in the whole Church of Pentecost. <laughs> they have indeed contributed their quota to the cause of the church. One of the major items on the agenda in these meetings will be an election to effectively replace them. I also extend my heartfelt gratitude to all area and national heads, ministry directors, all other ministers, trustees, chairpersons, members of boards and committees 
for your selfless and commitment to duty. The management and staff of the headquarters and the various administrative areas of the church are also highly appreciated for their commitment to duty, not forgetting the gallant officers and the entire membership of the church for their love and loyalty to the cause and the vision of the church. I say I equal to you all for your unwavering support in bringing the Church of Pentecost this far. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. May the Lord reward you abundantly. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, God continues to raise certain people in and outside the church who out of deep love for God and the church generously support the church's work in various ways. These people include those who fervently offered intercessory prayers for the church in their closets and the many others who participated in the Tuesday night virtual prayers. These prayers have been a source of strength to the church. There, there were many others who also supported the church financially. Some single-handedly put up church buildings, acquired plots of lands, purchased vehicles, and bought evangelism equipment and the like for the church. The names of some of these individuals with their donations have been summarized in Appendix A of the brochure. Among them are Elder Dr. Joseph Sianwe Japon of Teshi Nungwa area, Elder Dr. Nana Amo Tobin of La area, Edda Prince Amwa of Kwadasu area, Edda Eric Adai of Dansuman area, Elder Samuel Fredia Ajiman of Teshinungwa area, Dickness Mrs. Eunice Esumahini of Teshinungwa, Elder Dr. Nana K. Jesse of Swami area, Elder Patrick Dansu of Kaneshi, Elder Dr. Daniel Wekmanachu of Aflao area, Elder James Jamina Yamwa of Madina area, and Elder Bismarck of the Ansuman area. I would like to particularly thank Pastor Professor Otu Ellis and his family, who single-handedly put up a state-of-the-art ch children's resource center for the children's ministry. And this project is located right here in, at PCC. Prof Ellis, where are you? Yeah, God bless you so much. Yeah. This fully finished facility comprises a main hall with the capacity to seat 150 to 200 people, such like size room, a conference room, an office space, a reception, a room for audiovisual facilities, a kitchenette, and washrooms. On behalf of the Executive Council and the entire church, I express my profound gratitude to all such individuals. May God continue to be their strength and prosperity. Now to the state of the church address proper. The state of the church address represents a report on our stewardship for the year 2022 and some highlights on Vision 2023 agenda of possessing the nations. Let me begin from the headquarters administration. Over the period, the church continued to build staff capacity with in-service training programs. Last year, two training sessions were held, one for departmental and sector heads and other for the entire workforce within the administrative setup at the headquarters. Topics treated included the importance of feedback in a Christian organization, self-discipline, effective leadership, effective leadership, the head as the mediator, exemplary lifestyle of the leader, and the leader as the representative of the organization. Elder Professor Justice Bawili, Elder E. A. Buete, Elder Professor Kinibua Kodia, and Professor Kwesi Datiba were among the facilitators for these trainings. These trainings contributed to the effective and efficient running of the various units and departments at the headquarters. 
as of December ending 2022, there was a total of 442 non-ministerial headquarters staff on the official payroll of the church. They comprised 2,224 employees at the area offices and 218 at the head office. By the grace of God, 36 workers joined the workforce while nine retired during the reporting year. They retired as follows. Joseph Akununu, he served for 39 years. Josephine Ai Hyde also served for 39 years. Emmanuel Eshan also served for 29 years. Benjamin Sam, 28. Yao Oche Somwa, 26 years. Albert Hammond, 26 years. Opoku Kwate served for 14 years. Samuel Apia did 13 years. And John Wulun for 8 years. We thank God for their lives and services to the Church of Pentecost and wish them a good rest in their retirement. Now let us turn our attention to some statistics of the Church of Pentecost globally. The total number of ministers worldwide as of December 2022 stood at 3,233 with 737 as missionaries as missionaries. Of this, 1,863 are ministers in Ghana. The church also had 161,457 officers, comprising 52,000 elders, 35,000 deaconesses, 73,000 35,000 deacons, 73,555 deaconesses. Ladies and gentlemen, these gallant men and women continue to serve as a solid support to the church in our pursuance of the vision 2023. Once again, on behalf of the entire church, I say I equal to all ministers and officers of the church for their tireless efforts, selfless commitment, and dedication to service. Now let's turn to the membership of the Church of Pentecost globally. As of December ending 2022, the Church of Pentecost had presence in 151 nations, including Ghana. With a total membership of 4,203,077. This represents a percentage increase of 7.7% over the previous year's figure. Now, we want to come to Ghana, membership in Ghana. The Church of Pentecost in Ghana recorded a membership growth of 7.9%, leading to a total membership of 3,597,955 as of December 2022. This constitutes 10.7% of the 2022 estimated total Ghanaian population of 33,475,870. Hallelujah. Inasmuch as we thank God for the numerical growth of the church, we continue to pray to God that our increasing numbers will enhance our possession the nation's agenda of transforming every sphere of society with values and principles of the kingdom of God. The data, again, reveals that the youth, which constitute 4.1%, continue to make up the largest segment of the church's membership. Children membership constitute 31.1%, while membership of those above 35 years constitute 24.7%. As of December ending 2022, the children and the youth membership of the Church of Pentecost represented 75.3% of the church's total membership. This re reality continuously points to us that we must be mindful to factor our young people in the planning of our activities and programs at all levels of the church. The church in Ghana embarked on a total of 
2,936 evangelistic outreaches. These outreaches resulted in 288,248 souls for the Lord. To the Lord's glory, 209,283 of these souls were baptized in water, representing 72.6% of the souls won. The reporting period again witnessed the opening of 646 new assemblies. A total of 60 districts were also created during the period. As of December 2022, therefore, the church in Ghana had a, had a total of 18,844 local assemblies or churches and 1,631 districts. By the grace of God, three administrative areas were also created. Thus, Duyaonkwanta, Atonsu, where an old Tafu areas were added to the church. The total number of administrative areas in Ghana now stands at 76. All these successes have come about due to the commitment of our members to the church, to the cause of the gospel. It is pleasing to note that Elder Gotsen Watting of Abofo New Town District in the offensive area single handedly won 180 souls. So that is Elder Gossin. Sorry, those of you here, you are not seeing Elder's face. Of which 175 were baptized in water. So he won 180, and then he made sure that 175 were discipled and baptized. I'm informed that he was a jack the best soul winner in the area. Why not? 180. I don't know. Who has won 200 ever? Okay. Also in Dunkwa area, Dickness Comfort Amwaku of Dunkwa area won 71 souls for the Lord. <laughs> Elder Gossam Bwati and Dickness Comfort Amwaku are highly commended for their commitment to soul winning. In 2022, 243,965 of our members in Ghana received the Holy Spirit baptism. Of this number, 134,479 were new converts, representing 64.3% of converts baptized in water. The church in its discipleship efforts embarked on Bible study and home cell meetings in all assemblies these, coupled with various teaching services, serve as avenues to ground our members on the th theme for the year, as well as equip them for the possessing the nation's agenda. As of December 2022, there were 70,223 Bible study groups in Ghana, a 6% increase over the 2021. New converts and new member classes were also organized at all local assemblies to ground the souls one in the faith. Now let me turn to our ministries, children's ministry. For the period under review, the total children membership stood at 1,120,524. During the period, 46,743 children were baptized in the Holy Spirit and 101,449 were dedicated to God. The, I'm sure one children's teacher is clapping. Yeah. The ministry during the period successfully celebrated its golden jubilee. It also launched the Jetro Initiative, which as of December 2022, was running in 367 districts and 4,564 assemblies. The Jet Jetro Initiative is meant to complement and strengthen the activities of the children's ministry in building the foundation of the children in Christ while making their work in the faith exciting through intentionally designed extracurricular activities. 
a total of 1,980 community children clubs existed as of December ending 2022. These clubs are significantly imparting children within the communities in which they exist. The leadership of the children's ministry is applauded for their annual preacher kids competition. I believe the platform created by this competition is not only building the public confidence of these children, but also nurturing them in the word of God. Now to the youth ministry. The youth ministry worked zealously to ground young people in Christ and unleash them to possess the nations. As of December 2022, the ministry had a total membership of 1,568,129. To the glory of God, the various innovative activities carried out by the youth ministry created much excitement among the young people in the church. The introduction of campus pastors to complement the efforts of the Pensa Traveling Secretaries has contributed to the effective discipleship of our young people on the university campuses. Let's turn to the women's ministry. The women's ministry had a total adult female membership of 1,485,623, with 768,924 active members. The director and executive embarked on ministerial visits in 17 areas and two tertiary institutions. The varied activities initiated by the ministry at various levels of the church contributed to the spirituality and the resourcefulness of our women. The Complete Women Series. This is my favorite program on the Fen TV. <laughs> the Women's Ministry Program, aired on Sundays from 5.30 to 6 p.m., was a blessing to many homes. In addition to this, the ministry made several donations to many institutions, including the Insaum Inmate Skill Acquisition and Reformation Center, that is Insaum Prison. Now to the men's ministry. The men's ministry continued to gain an appreciable increase in men's involvement in the ministry. As of December 2022, the ministry had a total membership of 791,733. This figure represents all males above 20 years of age. The ministry during the period won a total of 10,282 souls for the Lord. They also contributed to opening three assemblies during the period under review. The ministry introduced agriculture projects and agribusiness at the area level as one of the steps taken to improve the livelihood of men in the church. Now to the evangelism ministry. The activities of evangelism ministry, coupled with teachings on soul winning, have revived evangelism at all levels of the church. Evangelism activities during the period included mega crusades, ghetto evangelism, cinevan evangelism, sports outreaches, streets evangelism, digital evangelism, and special group evangelism such as ministry to Muslims, commercial sex workers, persons living with disability, Rastafarians, and the like. These outreaches resulted in 300,154 decisions made for Christ. Now, the, to our boards and committees. The various boards and committees perform creditably well in their respective mandates. Their activities continue to contribute immensely to the Vision 2023 agenda of the church. On behalf of the Executive Council and the entire church, I express my appreciation to all chairpersons of committees and boards for providing good leadership. Now to the international missions. As of December 2022, the Church of Pentecost had presence in 150 nations as against 135 in 2021. There was an addition of 15 new churches, 15 new nations, I should say, 
These were Andorra, Estonia, Guam, Iceland, Lithuania, North Cyprus, Sao Tome and Principe, Uzbekistan. The others were the Virgin Islands, Venezuela, Armenia, Faroe Islands, St. Vincent and Granadis, St. Lucia and Latvia. Who has been there before? Yeah. So we are going places where you have not been. To God be all the glory. As of December 2022, the standard branches of the church operating in 150 nations worldwide recorded an overall membership of 605,122, witnessing a percentage increase of 6.6%. A total of 412 new assemblies were opened and 80 new districts were also created. Now, a total of 24 ministers were called into missions during the reporting year. Eight missionaries were also recalled to their various home countries. They are Apostle Semenya Yaudogwe. He served in DR Congo for seven years. Apostle Dr. Diodene Komala Nuekpe, he served in South Africa, South Korea for seven years. Apostle Michael Ajembrefo served in Gabon for four years. Apostle Isaac Ananisafo served in Argentina for seven years. Apostle Daniel Meku Jamara served in Madagascar for five years. Pastor Samuel Forsen served in Jamaica for four years. Pastor Francis Ajemambedu was in Rwanda for seven years. Eurek Desire served in Haiti for three years. On behalf of the church, I pray God's blessings upon these gallant soldiers for their sacrificial service to his church. Now to the education, um, the education units of the Church of Pentecost. I'm talking about the higher education institutions. Let's start with Pentecost University. Pentecost University, during the period, maintained the University A plus agenda. This agenda is pitched on an educational model that produces morally and ethically upright gra graduates, as well as academically and intellectually outstanding students with distinguished ability to solve problems. The university, in the reporting year, established an international digital center to facilitate research and teaching of engineering programs in Ghana. In 2022, Pentecost University won the prestigious Ministry of Education Award to pioneer a pre-engineering program and further receive approval to run five disting distinguished engineering programs in robotics, electricals, manufacturing, systems, and environmental engineering. To the To the glory of God, the university during the reporting period won several awards. They included the following. The Africa International Award of Merit by the West African Press Limited. The overall best private university at the 2022 Private University Students Association of Ghana Excellence Award. And now this one the best religious values university of the year 2022 <laughs> by the national clergy association of ghana it is also worth reporting that just a few days ago the european commission awarded pentecost university and five leading international universities a 2.69 million euro grant for research in application of artificial intelligence cyber physical systems, robotics, laser te technologies, and life cycle modeling for eco-efficiency manufacture of electric vehicle components. PU further enriched its postgraduate base and introduced a PhD program in leadership and governance, MPhil programs in business administration and theology, and other MSc and MA programs. 
in line with Vision 2023, 8,692 elders were trained in the higher certificate in theology and pastoral studies. 450 ministers wives graduated from, for, from the certificate in Christian ministry program and 442 seven ministers were enrolled on the BA theology program. Now to our school in UK, Birmingham. Birmingham Christian College continued to provide training for both laity and clergy in Europe and the Middle East within and outside the Church of Pentecost. A total of 455 students enrolled in different programs. 20 Church of Pentecost ministerial students were registered on the Bachelor's in Applied Theology program validated by Newman University. 359 lay leaders from Europe and the Middle East also enrolled in NCFE validated certificate in Christian ministry and leadership and introduction to Christian counseling programs. BCC began an MA in applied theology program with 18 students, including 15 ministerial students, a professional counseling program validated by the Counseling and Psychotherapy Central Awarding Body started in 2022. Pentecost Biblical Seminary in the United States. The Pentecost Biblical Seminary, located at the, at the headquarters of COP USA in New Jersey, is the training center for the clergy, late lay leaders and members of the church of the North and South Americas and the Caribbeans. Programs offered at PBS included Diploma in Pastoral and Theological Studies, Diploma in Lay Ministry, and Certificate in Pentecostal Ministry. PBS currently has a total of 223 enrolled at the school pending the New Jersey State Department of Education Licensure and ABHE accreditation, the seminary is waiting to offer a Master of Theology degree in Bible and Mission by 2023-2024 academic year. Now to our school in La Côte d'Ivoire. In view of the desire to streamline theological education and reaffirm our deep Pentecostal basis, our institution in La Côte d'Ivoire Pentecost Francophone Theological Bible School is working closely with Pentecost University to stabilize its contribution to theological and pastoral training among the African Francophones. This collaboration will facilitate the accreditation process for the school. Pentecost University will continue to mentor the school until it has received its full accreditation. The school currently has 60 students on enrollment. Now, let's take some points from the Vision 2023 20, interventions. Major interventions carried out under the Vision 2023 agenda included but not limited to the following. Let me start with the home and urban missions. The home and urban missions carried out targeted outreaches which yielded 37,549 souls for the Lord. These souls included 799 commercial sex workers, 2,359 street dwellers, 8,763 drug addicts, 13,685 North Ness in the South, 1,470 seven African migrants, and 286 expatriates. The ministry also won 767 Fulanis, 352 Kotokolis, 4,719 other unreached people groups, and then 4,353 children. Of these converts, 17,116 were baptized in water, and 9,689 received the Holy Spirit baptism. Now to the glory of God. In the reporting year, 
we had a Fulani pastor posted to the field in the person of overseer Suleiman Abubakar Diallo. You see Diallo on the walls? Yes, that is Diallo. He is currently the home and urban missions pastor for Inquanta area. He and his wife, Mariam, are among over 2,157 Fulanis who for the past four years have been won for the Lord. <laughs> to God be all the glory. The Home and Urban Initiative also received significant attention in many external nations. Also using the city church approach, the church in the Netherlands, USA, Cyprus, Sweden, Switzerland and some other Western nations continue to win people of different nationalities into the church. Now to the ministry of persons with disability. To the glory of God through the activities of MPWDs in Ghana, 3,452 souls were won for Christ in the year 2020. From this number, 1,738 converts were baptized in water. Pastor Rubin Peter Winnie, the coordinator for the ministry to the deaf, has been appointed the president of the African Deaf Christian Fellowship. <laughs> he will serve for a period of five years. Dickness Dr. Augustine Naomi, a member of the National Executive Committee and a head of department in the University of Ghana, constructed and presented ramps for five schools in the Ga East municipality in the greater Accra region to, I, to aid students with disability to gain access to their classrooms. The number of MPWDs assemblies in, in the Church of Pentecost, Ghana, as of December 2022, stood at 16, with a total membership of 930. Schools Outreach Ministry. The Schools Outreach Ministry, birth in June 2021, continues to make inroads into our young, young people in the schools. During the period, the ministry reached out to 17,895 schools, comprising 9,973 primary schools, 7,089 junior high schools, 695 senior high schools and 138 tertiary institutions with 31,540 people making decisions for Christ. Now, PENSA International. When we talk about PENSA International, we are talking about the global network and mission team of Church of Pentecost Young Professionals. They undertook groundbreaking mission activities in Singapore, South Sudan, Indonesia, Algeria, Sao Tome, and Principe. These missions activities yielded 476 souls altogether. Now, two of these Pensa International young men, Elder Yao Somwa and Dickin Joseph Ba, who were sent from Ghana to break grounds for missionary work in Indonesia, won 162 souls within two months and established a church. Now, to the glory of God, a resident missionary will be posted to Indonesia this year. <laughs> yes, by the work of two young men, they are very, very aggressive. I was telling one of them that if I had the zeal that he had, I would, I would, I would, I, that he has, I will be very, very grateful. Uh, because I need some zeal. <laughs> it's with the young people. So let's release them. They can do much more than we can do. Yeah. Chaplaincy ministry. Reports from the areas and nations indicated that the chaplaincy ministry had gained a firm foothold in the ministry activities of the church. For the purpose of this report, a few has been outlined. Prison chaplaincy. In Ghana, prison chaplaincy contributes, contributes tremendously to the social reformation of prisoners in various prison establishments nationwide. This is being pursued through the service of 
ministers seconded to Ghana prison service as chaplains. The efforts of these chaplains are complemented by the service of volunteers of the church's prison ministry within various areas. Military chaplains, by the grace of God, the church in Ghana has been operating in the Ghana Armed Forces since 2001. Currently, the church has eight ministers serving with the Ghana Armed Forces and deployed in various barracks nationwide with one flight cadet currently under training at the military academy. In the now, in the United States of America, the chaplaincy ministry carried out various training sessions across various regions to train volunteers in chaplaincy. Now, to the glory of God, Pastor Jehu Jima was successfully recruited as a chaplain in the United States Army with the current rank of captain. Now, workplace chaplaincy. The headquarters of the church are seconded to ordained ministers as chaplains for the Jospon Group of Companies and Tobinko Group of Companies, where they provide workplace chaplaincy to the staff and management of all their subsidiary, subsidiaries in Ghana. Now, this has been there for some time now. So far, the chaplaincy board has successfully trained and certified 9,108 of our laity our lay members in chaplaincy services. Through these men and women, the church provides weekly chaplaincy service in educational institutions, business and mechanic workshops, hospital, and, and uh, among organized groups such as drivers, market women, fishermen, and f fashion designers. Now, the ministry to chieftaincy. As of December 2022, there were 2,827 traditional leaders who were members of the Church of Pentecost. These included 74 paramount chiefs, 91 paramount queen mothers, and 2,662 other traditional leaders. During the period under review, 1,398 souls were won through the chieftaincy ministry activities. It is important to note that in the introduction of the ministry to the chieftain's institution is not only making inroads into the institution to bring transformation to it, but has also brought relief to Christian royals in Ghana to embrace chieftaincy. From 31st May to 3rd June 2022, the church successfully organized a royal conference for both Church of Pentecost and non-Church of Pentecost royals here at this center. This conference brought together 1,541 traditional leaders, with 80 of them being paramount chiefs and queen mothers. It is, it is again gratifying to note that the ministry continued to be very instrumental in helping to settle chieftaincy disputes in some communities. For instance, the district pastor of Adansi Akribuana district, in collaboration with Adansi Akribuana traditional leaders, and under the auspices of Adansi Dompasi traditional council, championed the installation of a new Odikro for the Adansi Akribuana traditional area after 33 years absence of a substantive traditional leader. He was able to settle the attackations and fracas that had existed in the community concerning the appointment of a new Odikro after the death of the then Odikro in 1989. Yeah. Now, reports from the areas indicate that through the chieftaincy ministry, the church has won great respect and as it lays well with the communities and traditional authorities. Now let's go to the economic development through our social interventions. Led by Pentecost Social Services, the church initiated various social development projects 
in deprived communities and institutions across the country in line with the Vision 2023 agenda of partnering with the government for the nation's socioeconomic development. When it comes to education, in 2022 alone, the various district areas and ministries in Ghana, together with headquarters, spent 10 million 686,084 cities to sponsor the educational pursuit of members of the church at various levels. <laughs> now, health. All 10 Pentecost healthcare facilities established by the church operators soundly across the country to provide quality health care services under the Pentecost Health Services Unit. A total of 204,184 patients assess health care in these 10 health facilities. Currently, Pentecost Health Service Unit has a total staff of 1,096 compared to 1,043 in the previous year. Additionally, five new health facilities are being constructed and they are at various levels of completion. In addition to the above, 3,652,451 was spent on healthcare support to members at various levels of the church in this, the reporting year. Under the community staff water improvement project, the church during the reporting year financed the drilling and mechanization of 56 boreholes across 13 mission areas at the cost of 2136000 Cumulatively, in the past four years, the church has provided 180 water facilities in deprived communities, schools, prison, police stations, health facilities, and mission houses in Ghana. These facilities serve over 90,000 people who hitherto would have traveled long distances in search for portable drinking water, reducing the incidence of water-related diseases in beneficiary communities. Now to live, livelihood enhancement interventions. To enhance economic livelihood in deprived communities, pensos with funding from the church implemented three key interventions to improve household income and create jobs for the youth. The church constructed three additional skills development centers to economically empower members of the church, especially the youth, to gain sustainable employment in sustainable employment. These were commissioned in Tema in Waliwali area, Zebila in Boku area, and Kalu in Wa area, serving over 180 youth. The church again constructed a Gary Processing Center in the Yampong community in, in Kwanta area of the church to improve the standard of living of women and their facilities in and around the community. Their facility produces about 500 bags of gari weekly. Now, security projects. To foster peaceful, just, and inclusive society, free from fear and violence under the Vision 2023, the church has embarked on projects such as the construction of skills acquisition and formation center prison camps and police stations. In addition to the Jura Camp Prison, commissioned in 2021, the church in 2022 completed and handed over the Inmate Skills Acquisition and Reformation Center project at Insaom in the eastern region of Ghana. <laughs> to the Ghana Prison Service, to the glory of God, the facility was commissioned by the President of Ghana, his Excellency Nana Adedankwa Akufuadu. The 320 capacity fully furnished facility has four dormitories, an infirmary, a visitor's lounge with a, a shop, a fully furnished administrative block with auxiliary offices, ICT lab 
with computers and accessories, a tailoring workshop, a carpentry workshop, and a chapel fully furnished with musical instruments. Now that we also have a baptistry, kitchen with a dining hall, soccer pitch, and a volleyball pitch. Now, so when you are in prison, we want you to be playing. Uh -huh. It's not all punishment. It gladdens my heart to inform you that the Jira Prison Camp Project, constructed in 2021, is already yielding some dividends. 34 inmates are receiving training in various vocations, including tailoring, kente weaving, leather working, carpentry, and metal works. On top of this, lives are being transformed, with many inmates turning a new page by accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. I am an agent of transformation. As of December ending 2022, there were 116 inmates in Nigeria. From day 74 gave their lives to Christ. 61 were baptized in water to the glory of God. Again, in our bid to further assist the prison service in decongesting the prisons, the church, beginning in 2022, embarked on an annual release of some prisoners with default warrant by paying for their fines own. In 2022 alone, 41 prisoners were released. The penalties for six inmates were borne by the General Secretary Apostle Alexander Nanaya Kumilavi and his family. Yeah. I was there one day when he said I should come and visit his friends. I said, who are these friends? So I came out and I saw these strange faces. Where are they from? I've released prisoners. Hey, you have released prisoners to the head office. <laughs> So these released inmates were camped here at Pentecost Convention Center to be reoriented on how they could f fashion their, their right attitude to civil life, to the glory of God. During the prayer session for these ex-convicts, all were baptized with the Holy Spirit baptism. <laughs> with the evidence of speaking in tongues. They have since been assigned to the pastors of their respective locations for mentoring and discipleship. Additionally, the church has graciously completed the construction of police station for the Ghana Police Service at Kwaumpe in the Kintampo area, Bono East region. The facility is currently awaiting commission. Now, let's listen to this testimony from an inmate at the Camp prison. In 2018, the Vision 2023 started. The prison's project under the Vision 2023 agenda continues to make inroads. <laughs> I <laughs> Here are various testimonies of some lives impacted so far. A normal body in the year of Tadam, this up to be. The Bibang Mushin Ma, and you see, my mind said, the hunger to him, and the Pifia. A normal body in the being of Tadam, my self is under my name. The only mission for one, why, six months, 
Okay, let's end it here. We pay free her from our sorry in the agro. <laughs> yeah. Miracles. Reading the reports from the various areas and nations gives one the strong affirmation that the Lord is alive and is in his church to prove himself faithful through signs and wonders. To the glory of God, the church continued to record remarkable healings, deliverance from satanic oppression and several miracles, a few of which have been documented in session 4.11.11 of the brochure. I, however, want to share three of these spectacular events with you. To the glory of God, in Hoho area, a brother declared dead was brought back to life. Brother Daniel Kweku Cabre of the Amenya community, an idol worshiper, was declared dead by a medical doctor at the Orara Government Hospital. He was to be sent to the mortuary upon the doctor's declaration. However, the surprise of the, to the surprise of the nurses and the doctors at the facility, his seven-year-old son, a children's ministry member of the Amenya Assembly by the name Emmanuel Kofi Pento said he would not allow them to take his father to the mortuary and that he should be allowed to pray for the father to wake up. The boy, upon per permission, prayed for the father to be brought back to life. After the prayer, they went ahead with their body towards the mortuary. But on their way, the dead body started shaking. <laughs> and as a result, he was rushed back to the doctor for medical attention. By God's grace, he was restored to life. <laughs> Surrendered his life to Christ, and together with his wife, both were baptized in June 26, 2022. They are currently members of the Church of Pentecost. At Koyokumi District in Gorsi area, Derek Amponsa, a six-year-old boy, unable to walk and talk since birth, received his speech and got on his feet for the first time in six years after he was prayed for. Ada King George Aqua of Ota in, in Canada, testified how God healed his son. He recounted that his son had a hole in his upper palate, and doctors had scheduled him for surgery. Upon prayers, God miraculously healed his son, and the hole was closed by itself without any surgical procedure. To God be all the glory. Since the last council meeting, May 2022, to the glory of God, the following ministers have successfully completed their PhD programs. Apostle Oyina Jemfi of Begro area, Apostle Kennel B.J. Kumiwood, Apostle Diodene Noepwe, Apostle Philip Osei Kosa, Apostle Dr. J.I. Uh, Buete, Pastor Job Redu of A&T District, Pastor Captain Jehu Jima, also completed his Doctor of Ministry in Chaplaincy. The following retired ministers were also awarded an Honorable Doctor of Divinity by Miniline Theological College for their impact on Christian ministry and society. They are Apostle D.K. Nobulachu. <laughs> Apostle E.K. Barabu and Apostle Nicholas Apia Misa. Brothers, congratulations. Despite the many successes struck in the year under review, the church is still battling some challenges such as high level of literacy, especially in the rural areas 
will continue to hamper the effectiveness of discipleship interventions such as Bible study and home cells. Nationwide outbreak of cocoa disease, rehabilitation programs continuing to affect the socioeconomic life of members within the cocoa growing areas. Poor evening church attendance, including ministry classes and home cell meetings, persists in some areas. The absence of means of transport, such as motorcycles, for easy visitation of local assemblies in the rural areas also continues to be a challenge. Migration of members, especially the young people from the rural areas. We are still having a deficit of about 2,000 um, locals who do not have a place, decent place of worship. Some are still worshiping in classrooms and under trees. And this is as a result of our continuous opening of assembly. It is good, it, but it brings a challenge of infrastructure. But God is still alive. He will find places for all these people. To augment the effort of the headquarters in addressing these challenges, I employ all concerned, including area heads and district ministers, to devise measures to tackle these challenges in their respective jurisdictions. Since the last council meeting, brothers, the Lord has called home some of our ministers and wives, and ministers' wives, and widows. Let us continue to pray for the families of the, the, the families they left behind, that the Lord will continue to sustain them. May we at this juncture respectfully rise and observe a moment of silence and respect to these departed souls. May their precious souls rest in peace. Amen. Please have your seat. <clears throat> now, retirement of ministers, Ghana and external missions. After years of serving the Lord and the church, some of our ministers will be retiring from active service this year. It is my singular honor to present them as follows. The first on the list is F, our former chairman. He served the church and is on record as the youngest chairman ever. With his whole heart, he has been a great inspiration for us. Even in his condition, he still be writing books for the church with one finger. It's no other person than Apostle Dr. Michael Kavanagh to me. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. He has preserved his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He served for 39 years. May I respectfully ask that you bring our revered former chairman upstairs. Shall we put our hands together for our dear? Please let the Mama Mata please join. Now we are going to call the retired ministers. And once you hear your name, you come with your, your spouse. We want to wait for him. As for this man, we, we have to wait for him. Let's put our hands together. The Lord has been gracious to him and to all of us. Let's wait for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, let some of the big men, strong men, go and carry him. Yeah. Go and, go and carry his wheelchair and lift him and bring him to us. Yeah. Yeah, the strong men, the strong pastors, please. It's funny, difficult to navigate at the corner. Are you there? Just aid him. Will he be able to come? Let's carry it. Let's help the wheelchair come up. Let's wait for him. <laughs> Let's put our hands together for our revered. Let's put our hands together for him. Almost here. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. to him alone. Hallelujah. Amen. To all the chairmen under whom I served as a minister. To the memory of Chairman Safo. To the memory of Chairman Iboa. To the glory and honor of Apostle Professor Opoku Nina. And to the honor and distinguished gratitude of our current chairman, Apostle Eric Namiche, to all ministers of the church, and to you all counselors, and to the millions of the entire membership of the Church of Pentecost. Amen. Shall we continue to do it for him? I'll call the rest to join our revered chairman, 
Apostle Governor Atta Côte d'Ivoire also served for 40 years. So you come, please, once you hear your name, you come via the same route. Apostle David Tete Tekwe, my presiding elder, he served for 37 years. Please come off stage. Apostle Dr. Benjamin Ali, he served for 33 years. <laughs> Now, our former International Missions Director, Apostle Emmanuel Jesse Addo, he served for 32 years. <laughs> Apostle Jones Ewa Efifa, he served for 30 years. <laughs> Apostle Moses Kwame Ahiako, he served for 29 years. <laughs> Pastor Samuel Koku Amankuna, he served for 37 years. <laughs> Pastor Mighty K. Yeboa, he served for 37 years. <laughs> Pastor Daniel Ousu Apia, he also served for 37 years. He is also a miracle. The Lord has saved his life severally. Pastor Ebenezer Kweku Apia, he also served for 36 years. Pastor Alex Ketre also served for 30 years. Pastor Emmanuel K. Ofori, he also served for 30 years. Pastor Benjamin Wetekwe served for 30 years. Pastor Ni Abiotete served for 30 years. Pastor Evans Nketia Eji, he served for 29 years. Pastor David Ongunadate, 29 years. Pastor Martin Luther Aouku of France, he served for 28 years. Pastor Joseph Aka, also served 27 years. Pastor Isaac Justice Kofi Akun, also served for 27 years. Dan Nyampon Asihine also served for 27 years. Erin Sowa Akonai also served for 26 years. Joseph Mensa Krampa also served for 26 years. Stephen Nyakote Kwao also served as a tent minister for 26 years. Pastor S.Y. Asari of Nigeria served for 26 years. Pastor Peter Owusu of France also served for 25 years. Stephen Kwesi Aiku served for 24 years. Pastor Amon of Cote d'Ivoire also served for 24 years. Pastor Kuhonu Etene Benin served for 23 years. Pastor Kofi Enchivosiaku, he served for 23 years. Francis Ajay, Kweku Ajay, also served for 23 years from Italy. Oponi Boateng served for 23 years. Charles Inkum also served for 23 years. Pastor Dr. Nicholas Daku also served for 22 years. <laughs> Pastor Mensa Buama of Germany served for 18 years. Pastor Stanilas Berinzingo, Burundi, served for 10 years. Pastor Benedict Okumu, Kenya, served for 9 years. Beloved, these gallant soldiers of the cross have served the Lord and the church very well. This will be their last official participation in our council meetings as counselors. Therefore, I kindly request that we honor and appreciate them with a standing ovation. <laughs> Hallelujah.
dear retiring ministers, I pray that the Lord God Almighty, whom, before whom you have walked and served, will bless and grant you a restful retirement when the time is due. God bless you all. Thank you very much for serving our church. God bless you. You may take your seat now. Some can go through this way, those who are strong. Otherwise, the ram is over there. We need to handle you people carefully. No, my mama. Brothers and sisters, as earlier hinted, an important aspect of this year's General Council meeting will be the election of a chairman, general secretary, and four other executive council members. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord shall lead us in selecting the right people, just as he has done with the people of old. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I now declare this special 46th session of the General Council meetings of the Church of Pentecost formally opened. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. What we waited for has come to pass see your Lord. we want to take the hymn number three in the brochure page 96 for our standing let's bless chairman for that wonderful delivery our brother god bless you god bless you you have to read over 2000 plus pages to summarize it to this level thank you very much chairman Church, we want to bless God with this hymn, number three. When upon light billows you are tempered tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Let's see. 
blessings and naming them one by one, being surprised at what the Lord has done. We want to invite Apostle Dr. M.K. into me to stand in to offer our thanksgiving to God for what he has done. Dear Lord, you have granted us grace to see what you have done. Looking back to the days of our fathers, looking back and considering what was once said about the church, that these people can only pray, nothing else they can do. When our founder was often ridiculed as saying, if you are not opening schools, building hospitals, then what are you doing in the Gold Coast? Your servant replied, I'm preaching the gospel. I'm winning the lost. And one day, these people are going to build the schools, the universities. They are going to establish the hospitals. They are going to train people. And Father, we are witnesses. About 80 years now, we see, we behold, we count, and people have recognized. And so this afternoon, on behalf of the entire church, we come before you, O oh Lord, with our sacrifices of praise, to say thank you, Lord. For surely, this is not the doing of man. It is your doing. By the power of your right hand. Father, we thank you. Church of Pentecost says thank you. Amen. Our fathers, your gallant ministers, standing here before you, say thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We do know, O oh God, that this is not the final storm. As we spear forth your word into the nations, as you covenanted with our church, that you're going to use the church as a spearhead to reach nations. We recognize, O oh God, that over 150 nations being penetrated by the church at this time. Oh Lord, we pray that the remaining 90, uh, 54 countries will be given to us. Amen. And where we are, we will continue 
to impact and possess them for your glory. So continue to bless and lead our fathers, the chairman and his executive council. Continue to bless and equip the ministers, the missionaries, the area heads. Continue to bless and prosper the members of the church, the business people. So, oh God, you equip them and provide them with the finances that we can possess the rest of the world to your glory. We thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Let's, let's take our seats. Chairman, with your permission, I want to make one or two acknowledgments and then we'll listen to our guest of Anna. Chairman, we have the Archbishop Ben Smith, Primate Anglican Church, West Africa, Venerable Dr. George Dawson Amwa, Executive Director, Anglican Church. Our father, our brother Dawson, you are warmly welcome. Also in our midst, we have Honorable Ahmed Ibrahim, Elder Ahmed Ibrahim, MP for Banda, Solomon Dakonkwam, DC, Gumwa East, Al Haji Zubri, Kasim, Efutu, MC. We'll come again and continue with the rest. Brothers and sisters, it's now time for us to listen to our special guest of honor. It's nobody than the Vice President of the Republic, His Excellency, Dr. Mohamedou Baumi. And shall we put our hands together to receive the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana? Also, Eric Nyamiche, Chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Nanaya Kumilabi, General Secretary. Apostle Emmanuel Ajimambakoy, International Missions Director. Apostle Professor Upokunina, Immediate Past Chairman. Apostle Dr. Michael Covenant Ntumi, the former Chairman members of the Executive Council, heads of churches and parachurch organizations. The Central Regional Minister, Sis Ma Justina Marigold Hassan, Minister for Education, Elder Dr. Yao Idukum, Ministers of State, members of Parliament, MMDCEs, my good friend Dr. Maxwell Opoku Afari, Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana. National and area heads of the Church of Pentecost here present. Ministers and ministers' wives of the Church of Pentecost here present. Members of the Church of Pentecost worldwide, invited guests, the press, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is such a great honor to be here today as a special guest of honor for the 46th session of the General Council meetings of the Church of Pentecost under the theme, Repositioning the Local Church for Maximum Impact in the Nations. In 2018, I participated in the opening service of the 43rd session of the General Council meetings here at the Pentecost Convention Center. I'm thus humbled that when you were looking for a special guest to share fellowship with you today, your lens fell on me again. Apostle Chairman, I do not take this glorious privilege for granted. 
I am very grateful. Kindly accept the warmest regards of the President, His Excellency Nanadu Dankwa Kofuado, a great admirer of the Pentecost Church, Church of Pentecost. The Church of Pentecost, as we all know, is the largest Protestant church in Ghana. With a membership of almost 3.6 million just in Ghana. I've learned with great admiration that as a small indigenous church which began in Ghana, the Church of Pentecost has grown to become a great international Pentecostal church with presence in over 150 other nations outside Ghana. This admirable achievement illustrates how committed and dedicated the church's leadership has been over the years since its founding. You have been blessed with very good leaders. <clears throat> Apostle Chairman, the President and the Government greatly acknowledge and appreciate the Church of Pentecost's contribution to national development. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, the nation received significant relief from the church. You released this center, the Pentecost Convention Center, for use as an isolation and treatment center for patients. Again, the church released 15 vans to the National Commission for Civic Education to help educate Ghanaians about the pandemic. And the church provided fuel for these vans for the entire time the NCC used these vans. It is for this reason and many others that the Church of Pentecost was among the few institutions awarded by the state at the recent National Honours and Awards event presented and presided over by the President of the Republic, His Excellency Nana Dankwa Kufuado, in recognition of the Church's contribution to the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Once again, thank you very much and congratulations. <clears throat> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am also aware that in line with the Church's efforts, to contribute to the decongestion of our prisons and the reformation of prisoners. It has built and donated two state-of-the-art, well-furnished correctional facilities at Ejura and in Sawam to the Ghana Prison Service and by extension to the nation. I am told that there are two others also at various levels of completion. Aside these mentions, I'm also aware of many other intervention programs in the areas of education, community health care, water and sanitation, economic livelihood, empowerment, as well as many other critical interventions bothering the peace and stability of the nation, including the construction of police stations and ministry to the ghettos. For the past five years, you have been consistent with your environmental care program, which has caught up in many other religions and non-religious state actors. I've also learned with admiration of a royals conference hosted by the church last year, which brought over 2,000 royals from across the nation as an intervening tool towards the church's contribution to the transformation of our chieftaincy institution. Furthermore, it has come to my notice that from 14th to 16th June this year, you will also be hosting a conference for politicians. <laughs> I think the Holy Spirit will come down on that day. 
Amasi, I commend the Church of Pentecost for this bold initiative and unreservedly endorse this conference. I hope and pray that this conference will positively impact our politics as a nation. Please remember to ask the politicians when we assemble to focus on the solutions to the problems of this country. And let us have a politics of ideas and solutions, uh, not a politics of insults and propaganda. And that is what we need in Ghana. We should let our politics shine a light on what we are doing and not try to cover things in darkness. When Apostle Eric Nyamichich, Apostle Chairman, presented the State of the Church report, there was a lot of light in that report. It had a lot of light in that report. There was a lot of data. <laughs> now, <laughs> <laughs> data <laughs> data brings light people who don't like light don't like data <laughs> so when you see a politician trying to talk you just say bring the data to support what you are saying and let us talk so I think this conference will be very very important uh, that let us focus on, on, on light, let us focus on data, let us eschew insults and propaganda, and let us focus on solving problems that face this country on an everyday basis. Various problems. Um, not a long time, a long, about almost a year ago, taxi drivers came to see me in my office. And one of their major problems that they presented to me and my team. They said, look, our, businesses, our business is collapsing. I said, what is the problem? They said, now we have Uber. And many people are not taking taxis as before. You know, people want to feel safer and for other reasons, so they would rather call Uber and bring us. So uh, Uber is taking our business. So how can you help us? So we sat down with my team and said, okay, how do we help our taxi drivers compete with the Uber drivers so that they can also be like Uber? So we set the team to work. And so the task was to digitize the operations of our regular taxis, just as you have with Uber. I'm happy to say that that work has now been completed. And in the next couple of months, we will be able to place our taxis, at least in Greater Accra, to start with, all on an Uber-like platform. And you'll be able to call them just like you call Ubers to your homes and all of that. It's a practical solution to a practical problem. And that is the sort of thing we, as politicians, should be focusing on dealing with problems of our people. And there's more actually coming, but this is not the forum. I think we are attacking everybody. Trotros <laughs> will come later on, VIP buses, Ayalolo, Metro Mass. The whole public sector is going to go on, and private sector transport is going to go on what we call a tap and go system. It's, when you go to England, they have the Oyster card that you travel with. Ghana is also going to have an Oyster card before the end of this year. You know, so we are trying to talk and deal with problems. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm told that all these interventions of the Church of Pentacles have been inspired by the Church's five-year strategic vision, Vision 2023, which has its overarching team processing the nations, transforming every sphere of society with values and principles of the kingdom of God. Apostle Chairman, on behalf of the President of the Republic, I say a big thank you to you, the Church of Pentecost, and its leadership. Your concern and love for the nation as a church is infectious and has indeed impacted many churches. 
This, the government of Ghana fully recognizes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is instructive to note that the church has been able to do all these as an indigenous organization with no foreign or external support. All the funds for these many social intervention projects have been raised locally. The Church of Pentecost therefore provides us with the needed example that with good leadership, Ghana has what it takes to manage its affairs and make this country the envy of many. With good leadership, we can make it. And with the Lord at the center of everything, it is possible, as Matthew 19, 26 puts it. Ghana can become an advanced nation. It is possible for us to make a maximum impact on our nation with the right leadership. Apostle Chairman, permit me to congratulate you for your sterling leadership qualities exhibited as the chairman of the Church of Pentecost in the past five years. Your leadership prowess, godliness, virtues, and rich counsel have been felt in every facet of Ghanaian society, including the seat of government. I also want to congratulate you on your election as the president of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. Congrats. We look forward, as always, to working with you for the betterment of our country. As I have been made to understand, this meeting will see to the election of a new general secretary, as my dear friend and brother, Apostle Alexander Nanayao Kumilabi's term of office ends in September 2023. Again, the chairman, Apostle Eric Nyamiche's first term ends in September this year, as well as four other executive council members. I pray that as always, your elections will be done seamlessly to the glory of God. <laughs> Apostle Chairman, I, at this point, solicit the prayer support of the Church of Pentecost and other Christian leaders gathered here for the peace and prosperity of our nation, Ghana, and the world at large in these difficult times. On this note, Apostle Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the honor done me, and most importantly, thank you for your attention I wish you fruitful deliberations culminating in a highly successful meeting. God bless you and God bless our nation, Ghana. Praise God. Praise God. Let's put our hands together. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We can take our seats. Paul's invites Apostle J.K. Asaba retired to come and stand in and pray for the peace of the nation, prosperity, and the government. Hello, hello. Shall we be upstanding? Oman Ghana Ba Praise God to a wishum Yamiaji Wunkwa Adu me Shira wo Trewon Tamba Bam Bekum Nini Fa Adu me Rati E so
Father, we stand before you in humility of spirit, and we thank you for this nation, Ghana. We want to thank you that in your own decision and determined counts, you determined the geographical boundaries of this nation and the people that will live in it. We thank you for the climate, the vegetation, and all the resources that you've given us. We want to thank you, God, for the leaders that you have given to this nation over the years gone by, for the past 66 years that you have given us this nation, Ghana. We want to thank you for the wisdom and the grace that you give to each one of them to be able to lead. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ and continue to lift them before you. We trust, O oh Lord, that you are the one who will touch their hearts like the course of a river. You turn the hearts of leaders in the paths that you have chosen. And we pray, Lord God Almighty, that you will touch them. Lord, we pray as we stand before you, we ask that you forgive this nation. That in the past, all the leaders that you have given us, everything that they ever introduced, we stood against it. We always were asking for different people whilst you have given us one working. And we never accepted the things they introduced, even if it came from you. And we stand before you as a nation guilty. And we pray that you will forgive us and cleanse us from this unrighteousness. For we have always prayed that you give us leaders. We have always prayed that you would be with us in elections. And you give us leaders and everything they introduce. We turn around to oppose and then start asking for new ones immediately. Even if those ideas came from you, we resist them. Because we do not know. And this is a sin before you. And we ask that you cleanse us from this unrighteousness. But Lord, we pray and request that Lord, you will continue to be with us. Even as we go through financial challenges, economic challenges, we are praying, oh God, that the people that are leading us, you would continue to be with them as they take initiative and steps to restore our economy. We pray that you will give them divine wisdom, divine grace, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give them insight from heaven. And continue to bless their efforts in Jesus' name. We are praying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will knit the hearts of all our people together. Deliver us from the spirit of partism that destroys our unity. May we never see ourselves as tribes and people belonging to parties built on ideas. But may we all belong to this nation, but you would continue to bless. Lord, indeed, we trust that we will get out of this economic challenge and your grace will be with us. Indeed, may you bless our homeland, Ghana. May you make our nation great and strong, bold to defend forever the cause of freedom and of right. Fill our hearts with true humility. Make us cherish fearless honesty and help us to resist oppressors rule with all our will and might forevermore and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Apostle. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, on behalf of the Chairman and the Executive Council of the Church of Pentecost, I want to say a big thank you to you for the Anadanas. We know your time is very tight. We know you should be somewhere in the next few minutes, but we've managed to stay throughout this time. We are very grateful. So on that note, we want to, the uh, Vice President would like to ask leave of us. Chairman has given permission, so they will see him off. We are very grateful. Thank you. See the victory granted in Jesus' name. We shall overcome. Hallelujah. See the victory granted in Jesus' granted in Jesus name. name. We shall overcome. Hallelujah. Surely. We shall overcome. Surely. We shall overcome. Oh, see the victory. We shall, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. Surely. We shall overcome. See the victory. Shall overcome. Hallelujah. See the victory. Grant 
Carry Jesus' name. Carry Jesus' name. He shall overcome. He shall overcome. See the victory. See the victory. Grant that in Jesus' name. Grant that in Jesus' name. He shall overcome. He shall overcome. Surely, surely. He shall overcome. He shall surely. We shall overcome. See the victory. Victory. We shall overcome. See the victory. We sing surely. We shall Surely, surely. We shall overcome. See the victory. See the victory. We shall overcome. Hallelujah. See the victory. Grant that in Jesus' name. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We sing surely. Surely, we shall surely, surely. We shall overcome. See victory. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Surely, yeah. Surely, we shall overcome. Surely, surely, we shall overcome. See the victory. See the victory. Surely, surely, we shall overcome. Surely, we shall overcome. Oh, we shall overcome. Surely, surely, we shall overcome. Surely, we shall overcome. Hallelujah. We sing surely. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. See the victory. We shall We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome.
conference cost. God bless you. Chairman, I want to take a few acknowledgments quickly and then move on. We have Professor Stephen Ade, former rector Gimpa, and former Jet Board Chairman Jinyari in our midst. Prof, you are welcome. We have Ni Afote Anokwafo II, a member of the National Chieftaincy Ministry Committee. Ubo Tazan Kunja, the sixth, also a member of the ministry, Chieftaincy Ministry Committee. Dickness Nana Humia is also a member. Captain Retired Eda Nana Bunya Kufi, the sixth, is also here. We have in our midst our brother, Elder Honorable Samuel Ofusampo, former chairman NDC, is also in our midst. Honorable Ahmed Ibrahim, MP for Banda, Solomon Daokokwam, DCE, Kumwa East, Alaji Zubiri, Kasim, Efutu, MCE, Anita Lab, Obo, Emisa, MC, Kaswa, Kwejo Obo, DC, Gumwa Central, Onoma Coleman, MC, Aguna, Suedro, Janet Oday Pinsa, MC, Aguna East, Elder Samuel Boachibopi, Managing Director Anglo Gold Ashanti, very Reverend Dr. John Kwesiadu Jr., General Secretary, Bible Society of Ghana. Honorable Esther Obain Dapa, former MP, Ebrim, and former Minister Lands and Natural Resources. You are all welcome. Honorable Desmond de Graaf Peitu, MP, Gumwa East. Honorable Bismarck Basie Nkum, Gumwa West, DCE. Honorable Emmanuel Atta Ofori Sr., MCE, Kwao South. Honorable Isaac Ajapon, DC, Kwao East, Abetifi. The Most Reverend Dr. Cyril Kobna Ben Smith, I think I've introduced our father already. Chairman, with your kind permission, we want to take some fraternal greetings from some of our brothers and sister churches. To begin with, I humbly want to invite the rep from Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council to be followed with uh, Elim Pentecostal Church and then Christian Council of Ghana and then the Anglican Church in that order. Thank you very much. So, GPCC. So that is the General Secretary of GPCC. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. We thank God so much for this August occasion, and we want to acknowledge that God is doing great things with his people. Honorable Chairman of the Church of Pentecost and President of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, Apostle Eric Nyamiche, General Secretary of the Church of Pentecost, Apostle Alex Nanaya Okumilabi, all other protocols duly observed. General council meetings are the apex platform by which churches assemble leaders to deliberate and seek God's guidance, direction, and counsel for his church. The Church of Pentecost has grown and progressed over the years under the overall guidance and direction of successive general councils. The GPCC wishes to acknowledge and congratulate all preceding and current general councils of the Church of Pentecost for a great work done for the body of Christ and the nation Ghana. As a key founding member church of GPCC, we recognize that the stronger the Church of Pentecost, the stronger the church as a whole. For with us, there is one body and one spirit, and indeed one Father who is Lord of us all. Indeed, this holds true for all churches in the body of Christ. The GPCC stands with the Church of Pentecost as you seek the mind of Christ and pursue the mandate for his church. The church is God's instrument for propagating the gospel and for the redemption of mankind to himself. We believe this must be the key focus and occupation of the church universally and also for the church of Pentecost. Thus, your theme for this year, 
repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nations is very timely and appropriate for the body of Christ. As you deliberate, may the Holy Spirit illuminate your hearts and minds with the intent of our Lord Jesus Christ for this season, the church and the society as a whole. May the good Lord bless the church of Pentecost. May he bless GPCC and the body of Christ. And may God bless our homeland Ghana. Congratulations as you go through the 46th General Council meeting. God bless you all. So we now invite our brothers from the Elim Pentecostal, Elim, Elim Pentecostal Church UK. Good morning, everybody. My name is Pastor Steve Ball, and this is my colleague. Could you would? And it's our privilege uh, to bring greetings to Apostle Chairman, uh, to the General Secretary, to the Executive Council, and to uh, all the other dignitaries and pastors and leaders here today. We count it an honor. Uh, as Elim Pentecostal Church in the United Kingdom to partner with you as a sister denomination towards the advancement of God's kingdom. And so therefore, on behalf of our General Superintendent, Pastor Chris Cartwright, the National Leadership Team, and our Elim Conference, which meets in the United Kingdom next week, uh, we want to bring you greetings. It's inspiring for us today to hear of what you are doing, not only to impact the nation of Ghana, but around the world. And we, as your friends, as your uh, sister movement, want to encourage you. We do pray that, as you have stated, that this church, this Church of Pentecost, might be repositioned uh, as, uh, for maximum impact in the nations. And I know that your organization is very much a part of the 10-year program that is unfolding around the world as church denominations gather together with fresh commitment to see the nations reached with the good news of Jesus Christ. And uh, we are working with that as we come towards uh, the 2000th anniversary of the Great Commission of Jesus Christ, following his resurrection, the Great Commission to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. So may the Lord bless you in your meetings this week. May you know the anointing and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit upon every decision and moment of this time together. God bless you from your friends in Elim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. When I receive one from Christian Council Ghana, and after that, the Anglican Church. I humbly perform this tax on behalf of the chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana, Right Reverend Dr. Hiliad Dogbe, who is currently out of the country. Apostle Chair, members of the Executive Council, may I humbly ask to stand in the existing protocols established. I humbly bring you greetings from the Executive Council of the Christian Council of Ghana and from all heads of churches that make up the body of the Christian Council of Ghana. We are happy to be associated with the 46th section of your council meeting and wish you well in all your deliberations. Apostle Chairman, the Church of Pentecost continues to show leadership in Christian missions and evangelism in the country. It is therefore not surprising that over the years, the Church of Pentecost has become the largest denomination in Ghana and one of the fastest growing churches in the world. Notable among your evangelistic tools is your media outfit, Pent TV, which has become a household name in media 
ministry in Ghana today. Pent TV has become a model TV station for sound biblical teaching, diverse in nature, and a platform for worship. The broadcast of the teachings and preachings of the different ministers on your TV station as a touch to a touch of ministerial variety and is indicative of the fact that God has given us different gifts for the edification of the body of Christ. I therefore congratulate you, Apostle Che and Pent TV, for the way and manner you have handled the, that aspect of the ministry, giving opportunity to viewers to benefit from the different gifts in the church by hearing God's voice from different ministers in different forms. Indeed, you are worth emulating. <laughs> Apostle Chairman, last year, the All Ministers Conference organized by the Church of Pentecost spearheaded under ministerial breakthrough for the body of Christ in our nation. The conference broke denominational barriers and affirmed the oneness of the body of Christ in Ghana. Indeed, it was an experience of a lifetime for many young ministers who had the opportunity to learn from senior colleagues from diverse backgrounds. More importantly, the conference was a wake-up call to the body of Christ to fight a common cause to ensure that ministers from various denominations are well trained to lead the flock of God. The Christian Council of Ghana, through our collaborations with the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, will continue to support your efforts to enhance the spiritual and moral quality of Ghanaian spirituality. Dearly beloved in Christ, the theme for this meeting, reposition, repositioning the local church for maximum impact in the nation has been chosen at the right time. The major problems of the Colossian church was that they had departed from the faith of the gospel and had put their trust in human philosophies, Gnosticism, Spiritism, and the like. Paul, in his quest to reposition the church, explicated the importance of building their faith in Christ and argued that Christ is God in the flesh. The challenge of the Colossian church is not different from ours in Ghana. Christ has been taken out of the church whilst human ideologies and personalities have taken center stage. In order to have a strong national church, the local churches must urgently allow Christ to occupy his rightful position in the church. He must increase and we must decrease. If the life of Christ is preached and lived by the church, Ghanaian Christianity will be meaningful to our nation. The local church must preach Christ and diseased from human directions and philosophies. Apostle Chair, let me use your platform to call for political discipline in our party politics and political discourse. We seem to be losing the fight when it comes to discipline in our political sphere even though majority of Ghanaians identify with the Christian faith. We continue to experience disrespect and insults in political discourse in our nation, and this is not good for our development. I therefore call on all Christians who are into politics and governance, that is, assemblymen, women, district chief executives, political party executives, etc., to bring their Christian values to bear on their political life and ensure that the nation does not lose her political discipline. Apostle Chair, let me again use this opportunity to call on government to speed up work on the recovery of the economy. 
we are all witness, witnesses of how the economy of Ghana has experienced a downward trend over the past year. The debt restructuring program has had great impact on many homes. We believe that with the wisdom of God, Ghana will come out of her financial predicament. I therefore call on government to seek God's intervention and work hard on this important matter. Please permit me to call on the church to intensify prayers for our dear nation as prayer is our greatest weapon. Let us continually ask the Lord to establish his kingdom in our nation and let his will alone be done. Apostle Chair, let me say thank you for the opportunity given to the Christian Council to fellowship with you on this day. And we wish you all God's grace and pray that the Holy Spirit will lead your discussions and decisions. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Father. Thank you very much. We now invite the Most Reverend Dr. Sarah Kovna, the Primate and Metropolitan Archbishop, Anglican Church. He's the leader of the Anglican Church in, in Ghana. Right. Good morning. I bring you greetings from the Church of the Province of West Africa, that is the Anglican Church in West Africa except Nigeria. So the Anglican Church has, uh, our province covers six countries, uh, Ghana, Cameroon, Sierra Leone, Liberia, uh, Gambia, and Guinea. And uh, I want to say congratulations to Apostle Chairman and to the leadership of the Church of Pentecost, especially for a very strong friendship that is brewing between myself and chairman. And I pray that this friendship will continue in the context of our calling as children of God. Just when I sat here, I remembered my friend, one of our apostles, we were together in Obuasi in 1992, and we labored together. And now we went, we're sitting there, I remember the good times we have together as people of faith. So I wish to congratulate you on your, on this, your session, general council session. And my experience of the Church of Pentecost is that the Church of Pentecost is the testimony of what God can do. Breaking barriers. When people say no, God says yes. And I believe that is your testimony. And I want to encourage you to keep it up and to reposition yourself taking that into cognizance. With God, all things are possible. And your church is a testimony of that. And so we are learning lessons from you. Although we might be older, but we are learning lessons. Lessons of taking church planting seriously. Lessons of taking evangelism seriously. And lessons of not being complacent. It's easy for you to become complacent as a church. And you know the Anglican church has always been a church, a church for princes and all that. Now, that is no more. <laughs> the church is not about being a prince. It's about being a servant. A servant of Jesus. So we wish to encourage you to do more. And we wish to, we wish to cooperate with you on being the voice of the voiceless. And I think that's one of the things that we need to work at. Being the voice. Jesus was asked, who are you? And then, John the Baptist, about John the Baptist, he says, I'm nobody, 
I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. So we are just a voice. So thank you for this opportunity to share these thoughts with you. And I pray for a successful uh, general council meeting for you. God bless you. Shalom. Thank you very much. Last item. We'll move to this the last. Yes. Thank you very much, says Chairman. This, what I'm going to do now is the last major item for this morning, and it has to do with special recognitions. To the glory of God, some of our members keep exhibiting excellence and hard work in their various fields of endeavor. Few of such people who receive awards are hearing acknowledged, and we want to mention their names and what they've been able to achieve. If you hear your name, you walk up stage, and then you greet the chairman, and at the exit, your certificate will be given to you. So the secretariat, please come up to the end of the staircase and then help us. Miss Mame Akusia Echian, a 12-year-old girl, a member of the Fumesua District Children's Ministry, Bompata, won the 2022 National Essay Writing Competition organized by Joy Lennon. <laughs> Let's receive our daughter. So we go around. Chairman, we greet you then. Master Eugene Nkrumah Yaboa, Junior Asset District, received the 2022 Presidential Award for being the best BECE male candidate for Ashanti region. <laughs> Next is Ms. Adenda Ayimpoka of Nsaom District who received the 2022 Presidential Award for being the BEC female candidate for the Eastern Region. <laughs> Following in is Ms. Emmanuel Adonko of Amamole District, Anya Blikma area, received the 2022 Presidential Award for being the best female BEC candidate for the Greater Accra Region. <laughs> Next is Master Lemuel Tete of Bechem District, Dunkwa area, also received a presidential award for being the overall best candidate for a half region. Let's clap for our brother. Following is Nanaya Inshramante, PRWC West Hills, won gold and bronze medals at Olympia 2022 Singapore by the Singapore International Mastery Contest Center. N following Nana Kobina Asari of Christ Ambassador School of Excellence and member of the Children's Ministry of PRWC Carnation, won the maiden edition of the National Junior Kids Quiz Competition. That's the young guy coming. Following is Master Edward Kofi of New Takrade District, won the regional Edify Ghana. Our code competition 2022 organized by Edify Ghana, Master Edward. Following is Master Bernard Benfoba of Mary Village District, won the 2022 Junior Graphic National SDGS essay competition organized by the Office of the President. <laughs> and he... Next is Miss Stephania. Finn of Jamestown District and people of Deutsche International School. She was a judge, the winner of the fifth edition of the National L and B Spelling Competition, international level age three to five, organized by Compass Plus and Canadian-based Pathway of Life Foundation. Miss Eva Boy Ampa of Salem Assembly in Tanokrom District and a student at International Community. Montessori School, Ghana, won the Outstanding Pearson Learner Award, highest mark in Africa, 
for Pearson Edisa Primary Award 2022. Next, Princess Nkamagin Kumi, an 11 year old basic five people of Prang Roman Catholic Primary School, won the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization Award for Bruno East. She emerged as the winner out of 100 finalists. Wow. Congratulations. Next is Master Stephen, <laughs> Master Stephen C. of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, emerged as the valedictorian, valedictorian for UHAS 2022 year group. He received Vice Chancellor's Prize for overall outstanding graduating UHAS student. In addition, he received the Dean's Prize for overall outstanding graduating student in the School of Allied Sciences. <laughs> Master Jack Clock Ajaben Amponsa graduated as a 2022 valedictorian at the University of Ghana Business School with a GPA of 3.93, almost four. Guy, what be? Right. Next, Master Gabriel Abbey of Paradise Assembly, Trinobua District, was adjudged the 2022 overall best graduating student at the University of Professional Studies. He was also the best graduating student in advanced science at the Department of Banking and Finance. Master Rigwell Addison Esiedu of the Pentecost University, University A Plus, emerged as the overall best graduating student at the 14th graduation of Pentecost University. Samuel's Master Samuel Pinaman Adomakon of Swamiria received the John Mensah Saba Memorial Prize 2021, best graduating student in the professional law school examination. Linda Otterball of Sword Area emerged as the best graduating student at the 2022 graduation of Takrade Technical University. She was also adjudged the overall best graduating female student and the best female graduating student for the Faculty of Business Studies. <laughs> Next is Ostakwabna Menga of Ntewisa District was adjudged best graduating student admitted under the University of Ghana admission policy for less endowed students. <laughs> Ms. Abigail Aheni of East Legon District in May, the 2022 best graduating student, BSc Mathematics, University of Ghana. <laughs> Ms. Bernadette Takwansa of Pensa, Keta Nursing and Midwifery Training College emerged the best nursing graduating student in Ghana for 2022. <laughs> Miss Doris Trenebua Banz of Ho Technical University was the best graduating student in the Faculty of Arts and Design. She also received Elizabeth Obinim's Fashion Excellence Award for best graduating student in fashion design and textiles. <laughs> Master Norbert Eliprim Doku of Pensa who Technical University received the Raincoat Roofing Award for the best graduating student, the Ghana Institution of Surveyors Award for the best graduating student in building technology. <laughs> Ms. Patricia Na Ajoko Ukwe of Teshinungwe area emerged as the best graduating student for the 2022 KNUST Diploma Terminal Midwifery Program. Mrs. Abigail Gaba of Teshi Nungwa area received overall best award, student award in MSc Mathematics Science at the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences. Ms. Scholastica Fosu of Upper Weja District, Odoko area, won the best female student with first class is HND secretaryship and management studies at Accra Technical University. <laughs> Nana Amma Zose was adjudged the 2022 best graduating student in MSc Accounting and Finance from Accra Business School. 
She was again agile, the best student in the following courses. Corporate reporting, best. Strategic management, best. Accounting, best. Investment analysis, best. Tax and business strategy, best. She also received the valedictorian award. Miss Apostle, Apostle Vincent Ananidente, Permanent Director, Executive Council Member, and a Coordinator for Chief Tenancy Ministry, received the second prize at the South Ghana Association of Writers Literary Awards under the Creative Nonfiction category. <laughs> Chairman's friend. <laughs> Miss Mefe Jima of Tantra Hill Worship Center, Achimota area, was awarded Fidelity Bank's best bank assurance direct sales executive. She has won the award for three consecutive years. Miss Jima. Overseer Dr. Perez Sepenu, the resident minister for Maikia Worship Center in the area, in 2022 became the first Kolebu Teaching Hospital Maternal Fecal Medicine Fellow with the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons. There are currently only six Ghanaians, Ghanaian trained maternal fetal medicine fellows in Ghana, including our brother, Dr. Perez Sepenu. I don't know whether I was able to make it. Mr. Daniel Kwabnamanto of Pen TV. Pen TV! <laughs> Won the best Christian TV presenter at award at the 2022 Praise Achievers Awards, Ghana, and the Media Personality of the Year Award at the 2022 Phase of Ghana Youth Awards. <laughs> Pastor Dr. Della Felix Kluche. The resident, minister of, the resident minister of Mount Olive's Worship Center, who also doubles as the media pastor of the church, was adjudged the overall winner of the Pan-African Media Awards in Nigeria in July 2022. He beat 100 other media practitioners nominated for this award from other African countries. We are indeed possessing the nations. Elder Felix Achim, the presiding elder, so the pastor received an award, his presiding elder also had an award. Maybe I have to, adjo I have to join that assembly. <laughs> elder Felix Achim, the presiding elder of Mount Olive's Worship Center, Odoko area, and chief executive officer of Fidem's group, took home the prestigious 40 under 40 award, consultancy and professional services category. Join this year's edition of the award ceremony held at Kempinski Gold Coast Hotel in Accra, to October 2022. Elder Dr. and Mrs. Sian Ejapon were adjudged the Globe Productions Limited, adjudged by Globe Productions Limited as the 2022 CEO of the year, sanitation category. In recognition of their outstanding leadership skills, they were also adjudged the RAD Communications Limited by the RAD Communications Limited as the Serial Entrepreneur of the Year. They were again awarded by the Association of Waste Managers, Nigeria, for their contribution to the waste management sector in Nigeria. Dickness Sophia Ku Joji of Teshin area was adjudged Ghana's Outstanding Communications Personality of the Year by the Entrepreneur Foundation of Ghana. She also received an award from the Entrepreneur Foundation of Ghana Global Women Achievers category in recognition of her impactful role in corporate communications as well as Brand Communications Personality of the Year in recognition of her outstanding communication skills. The award was by RAD Communications. Elder Dr. Dominic Nuete, 
receive a state honor from the Office of the President and the National Excellence Award in recognition of using his immense experience in infectious disease management in leading the Greater Accra Response Team of COVID-19 outbreak at the PCC Isolation Treatment Center. So you, this was received from the Office of the President. That's our brother, Elder Dr. Nwete. Mrs. Joyce and J of Hachu area received a state honor, Grand Medal, during the National Excellence Award hosted by the President for her excellence and sacrificial service to the state during the fight against COVID-19. <laughs> Madam Aiko. Elder Surveyor Benjamin Kwesilabi of Hachu area received a presidential honor during the National Excellence Award hosted by the President in recognition of his remarkable technical support to the construction of Ghana's foremost infectious disease center. <laughs> Elder Horbedu of Hachu area again received a state honor during the National Excellence Award awards hosted by the President for his distinguished service to the state during the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. We have the men and women to possess the nation. Elder Kofi Obe Eirebi of Kanesh area received a state honor during the National Excellence Awards hosted by the President for his distinguished service to the state during the fight against the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic. Mr. Joseph Nyako of La Area also received a state honor during the National Excellence Awards hosted by the President in recognition of his distinguished humanitarian services to the people of Ghana during the COVID-19 pandemic. That is our brother. <laughs> Mr. Pierre W.C. Accra. Mr. Emmanuel Riverson, a biomedical scientist from the Walwale area of the church, also received a state honor during the National Excellence Award hosted by the President for his distinguished service to the state during the COVID-19 pandemic. From all, all the way from Walwali, he came down to take that award. Let's clap for our brother. <laughs> Elder Alexander and Dickness Patient Deborah of Amamole District, Tanya Blekuma, owners of Touch Skies Ghana, Limit, Ghana Company, receive a Ghana Shippers Special Award for contributing to the economy in the areas of forex reserves, tax payment, job creation, and promotion of non-traditional <laughs> exports. And then Dickness, are you cool? Mamiya Senior Mitchell of Ashaman area received the 2021-22 Radio Personality of the Year, Water and Note Region, as the radio and television at the Radio and Television Personality Awards. <laughs> Nana Okukudrufo Chumesiankra the first of Fosumim Pasem was agile the social program host of the year for the year 2020-2023 during the Central Media Awards, Central Region. That is our brother Carmen with everything that was given to him. Dickness Francis Kausu of Highways District won the best highways worker. Highways District won the best highways worker award for Boni East 2022. The award was organized by the Construction and Building Material Workers Union of Trades Union Congress Ghana, Bono Ahafo region. Master Eric Anobil of Fufurikom District in Bompata came first in the 100 meter men's race finals. <laughs> Quite fast in the Ghana Athletics Association competition. <laughs> Miss Darling Na Kokoyabua of Mampobi District received the overall best award for her exceptional performance in all aspects of cadet intake 12 at the Fire Academy and Training School. Madam Ayuko. 
<laughs> private, private rose a cap Pame of La Area at the 2022 Basic Infantry Training Course at the Achiasi Jungle Welfare School won the following awards. Overall Best Recruit, Best Female Recruit, Best in Map Reading, and Best in Voice Procedure. <laughs> Madam Ayuko. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Dickness Naomi Oye Ohene Otimesis, Head of Nursing at the National Radiotherapy, Oncology, and Nuclear Medicine Center, Kolobu Teaching Hospital, was awarded the 2022 National Nursing and Midwifery Excellence Award, Education and Research category, in recognition of her contribution to education and research in cancer care, both locally and globally. Are you cool? Elder Dr. Derek Amwatin of Abosso Kawa Shuswanta was inducted into the Corporate Ghana Hall of Fame. That's right. Congratulations, Elder. Elder Alfred George Ejekum, CEO of Gelson Manufacturing Company, PRWC West Hills, won the Best Export Manufacturing Company of the Year Award at the Seventh Ghana Manufacturing Awards. Sister Ruth A.J., PRWC World Hills, and a member of the Voice of Pentecost, won the Discovery of the Year Award at the 2022 Maiden Edition of Eminent Awards organized in Accra. That's Ruth A.J. <laughs> Dickness Christian Mojifa of Mpaha District received the National Best Fisher First Runner Up Award during the National Farmers Day celebrations at Koforia Eastern Region. Mr. C.K. Akon from Commander District was adjudged the Best Central Regional Overall Fisherman in 2022. Was he able to make it? I don't know. Elder Maso Esibu of the Air Force Worship Center won the 2022 Central Region Overall Best Farmer. Mr. Minta Jampo of PRWC Kokomlemle received the 2022 Queen's Award for Enterprise International Trade, awarded by then Her Majesty the Queen of England. Dickness Dockers Osebufa of Oyarefa District was adjudged a professional service, professional service Entrepreneur of the Year Award by the Women in Entrepreneurship Award at the World Trade Center, Accra. Ms. Gloria Ousuamua of Teshinungwaria emerged first in Discuss Through. Hey, to me too. First in this cast through female category at the 2022 National Colleges of Education Games competition. Martin Addison of Action Aid Ghana, Teshin Waria, was adjudged the first internal digital ambassador for 2022 in recognition of his outstanding works in the organization. Elder Imano Bedu, presiding elder for Boasi PIWC and Senior Manager Sustainability for Anglo Gold Ashanti of Boise Mine was awarded the Sustainability Professional of the Year Award at the sixth edition of the Sustainability and Social Investment Awards. <laughs> Dickness Sabina Bilson, a retired nurse from PRWC Takrade, was given the 2022 Outstanding Nurse Award by the Excellence Award for Leadership and governance, nursing, and uh, midwifery. <laughs> Sister Ruth Akajesi of PRWC Takrade was adjudged the best artist of the year, 2022, at the 2022 Western Regional Music Awards, and also won the National Album of the Year by Emerging Music Awards in Ghana. 
<laughs> Elder Edward Bodua of Kamina District, the Regional Manager of Northern and Savannah Regions for the Public Utility Regulatory Commission, was awarded the 2022 PURC Best Manager. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Edusan, CEO of Edusan of Swami area, received the Semba Africa Business Excellence Awards. Elder Dr. Nana K. J. C. Ekwaba Sempremo, CEO of Nana K. J. C. Company Limited, won the Best Customer Awards 2022 from CMAF. Dickness Janet Agri of Swami area received the 2022 Social Impact Champion by Sustainability and Social Investment Awards. Her clinic, Jagris Fertility and Natural Health Clinic, was also adjudged the Healthcare Center of the Year by the Ghana Business Standard Awards. Oma Ayuko. Dr. Mrs. Millicent Agagimba won, Agagimba won the UNESCO Laurel Women in Science in Science in Sub-Saharan Africa Award with emphasis on the promotion of technology on persons with disability in Ghana. And last but not least for now is Mr. Francis Atta. He won the Western North Excellence Award that disability is not inability, sponsored by MTN. So Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, these are the few that we're able to put together for this year. Let's clap for all of them. So you have special lunch this afternoon with executive council members and the heads of churches. I am an agent of transformation. All right, we invite VOP to come and give us one song and then gradually we are drawing the curtains now. VOP.
To them, clap for them, they've done very well. We will be God bless you. I want to say a big thank you to all of you, our invited guests, participants, and all here in Gade. God bless you for uh, being part of this opening ceremony of the 46th session of the General Council meetings of the Church of Pentecost. We'll break for now, we close this session for now, and counselors will reconvene at 3 p.m. to commence business, 3 p.m. So when come and bring all your documents, this brochure will be discussed, the state of church address, the minutes, previous minutes, and the executive summaries from missions and Ghana. Chairman, with your permission, we... Right. After this session, Chairman want to host all executive council members and their wives, heads of churches, our special guests, and all the award winners who were recognized in this meeting at the 500 auditorium for lunch. So all executive council members and their wives, heads of churches and their spouses, special guests, and award winners. All others will be taken care of. You go to their Accredited counselors, you have your coupons, but the invited church public, we have uh, packs for you. You go to any of the caterers, you'll be duly served. 
We have caterers all over the place. Just go pick a pack and you can do justice to it. We want to end by inviting Apostle Dr. Daniel Walker to come and pray for a world peace and evangelization and also add a closing prayer. Then we humbly ask our immediate past president, Apostle Professor Pukunina, to declare the benedictions. And then that will be all for now. Thank you very much. Shall we respectfully rise if we can? Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things have done in this world rejoices who from thank you for this special meeting this opening service of the general council meetings we are grateful to you for what you have done for your church and for this special session as well father we want to thank you even for men and women that you have endowed with wisdom and the spirit of excellence we want to thank you for all these awards that your people have received. We pray that you continue to grant wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The Lord, members will continue to thrive and achieve the very best in our society. We know that you will continue to bless us with understanding. Thank you, O oh God. And now, Father God, we pray for the peace of our world. You created this world in serenity to live in peace. You created man upright, but we have gone after many schemes. And because of these several schemes, the results have been calamity and disasters. We see earthquakes, we hear wars and rumors of wars. Nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There are famines and diseases, strange ones, and fearful events in our world. But that was not your intention. You know, your word says that these things will happen towards the end. But still, O oh God, our Father, you have given us a window when you have said that if your people who are called by your name will humble themselves. And so we come in all humility and pray and seek your face and ask, oh God, that you heal our land. And he said, when we pray, oh God, you will hear from the heavens above and you will heal our land. Father, we pray and with confidence we come before the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace in time of this need. In times of this need that we are seeking peace. There are wars raging from Afghanistan to Ukraine. We pray in Jesus' name that you will speak peace into our world. That you will speak peace into our world. When the leaders of our nations, when the United Nations and other bodies sit, we pray that you grant them godly counsel, that you will take over their intellect, that the decisions that they make, they will not go for selfish ambition and fighting against each other and finding supremacy who is greater. But, oh Lord, they will consider 
that you created this world, that, Lord, we will know you and serve you. And if your peace will be sustained in this world, then we have to know you. And so we pray for the evangelization of our world. You have said that the harvest is wide, it's plentiful, but the workers are few. We pray in Jesus' name that you raise men and women, that as we go around possessing the nations, that, Lord, you will give us the entrance of your word, that when your people stand, Lord, we will speak for the good news. And when people come to the realization and the knowledge of good news, there shall be peace, because you are the prince of peace. We depend on you, and we believe and trust in your faithfulness, that as we have asked you in your name, you will do it. And so have mercy on us. And let us find this healing in the nations of our world. We thank you for answered prayer. As we leave from here, we go still in your presence, believing and trusting that you bring us back to usher us into business and other proceedings. And that at the end of our meetings, we will testify that of a truth, you are the living God and the God of our fathers who is also our God and the God of this great church. Thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now shall we receive the benediction. Now unto him who is able to do more than we can ask or imagine, be the glory now and forevermore. May he be with you in your going out and coming in. And may he continue to supply the needs of the world, the needs of the church, and your individual needs. May you go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you. Please let me correct you.